Welcome back to the Rory Talks Football channel, your daily Arsenal news, updates, debates and my opinions. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. We set 3,500 as the target yesterday, smashed it. 3,600 is the new target. Please smash a like on the video if you enjoy it as well. Declan Rice, of course, is the topic of conversation. We are into the end game. It feels like it now. Uh, if you were living under a rock, you wouldn't have known that uh, Man City finally put their first bid in for Declan Rice last night. It was £80 million up front with £10 million in add-ons. Uh, not up front, of course, but as a flat fee. And uh, and it was swiftly rejected this morning. And now, ultimately, that package of £90 million is the same as Arsenal's package of £90 million. Uh, obviously, Arsenal's was 75 plus 15. Theirs was 80 plus 10, which is better. Their add-ons are probably more achievable. Uh, but it sounds like, actually, the structure of payments wasn't all that dissimilar from Arsenal's. And ultimately... West Ham were not particularly impressed by it. So Fabrizio Romano this morning uh, said West Ham have rejected Man City's proposal for Declan Rice as they know Arsenal will bid again for more than £90 million total package. The plan has been clear for days. Uh, more to follow as the Arsenal third bid is expected soon. Man City remain in the race. And of course, as soon as Arsenal have made a third bid, I'll update you on this channel. So, so subscribe for that. Ornstein. Uh, West Ham have turned down Man City offer for Declan Rice. Man City made a formal proposal last night worth 80 million plus 10 million in add ons. West Ham unimpressed and quickly rejected it. Arsenal have seen two bids rebuffed, but remain determined to sign the 24 year old. And then this coming from ex West Ham United employee, who of course is very close to sources at West Ham, said the sources at the club described City's bid as unacceptable. So we've heard that it is unacceptable that it is not uh, unimpressive. And ultimately, you know, West Ham, I think, were expecting a bit more from Man City. And, and they've not got it. Because ulti ultimately, Man City really haven't been much more than Arsenal um, that West Ham had already publicly turned down and, again, described as fairly unimpressive. So I think this is good news for us. Ultimately, you know, when this news came out last night that they'd made that bid, um, I thought it's not it's not actually as bad as it could have been. I thought, you know, Man City could have come in and bid 100 million and gazumped us and we'd have been in trouble. Ultimately, they've come in and I think maybe they see value at uh, uh, Declan Rice being at 90 million. If they could get him for 90 million, that would be a good value signing for him. But the fact that they're not and the fact that that's been described as unimpressive and unacceptable by West Ham makes me feel like Arsenal are in the driver's seat again because we will come back in with the third bid. And if we can make that bid 100 million, which I think we should do at this point, I don't think Man City will come in for a second bid. Now, I was getting some replies last night on my on my Twitter, uh, you know, saying, oh, now City are in, it's over. From both sides, City fans and Arsenal fans saying, you know, once, I, once City decide they want a player, that's it. Um, and I understand where it comes from because, you know, City do pretty much have unlimited funds. But actually, that's not the way that Man City typically operate. They are very disciplined in the transfer market. Whether it was last summer, they were interested in Cucurella. Really, they needed a left back. Uh, they wanted Cucurella. Chelsea outbid them and Man City let it happen. They've lost out on Maguire, uh, which was a good decision. Uh, Van Dijk, Alexis Sanchez. You know, historically, there are lots of occasions where... They've been in bidding, well, they've not been in bidding wars with Premier League clubs. They've let players go to other Premier League clubs for higher amounts when they don't think the value is there. And if you look at it, you know, Arsenal will go above the market value for Declan Rice. I think the market value for Declan Rice is probably about 90 million. Arsenal will go above that because we desperately need him. He is the key to our midfield. He's Arteta's number one signing. We've done all of the groundwork for it for months and months and months. We're not going to let this one slip. Whereas for Man City, apologies for the siren, for Man City, it, it would be a nice thing to have. It would, of course, be a great replacement for Gundogan, who's leaving on a free. But they don't need him. They've got Rodri. They've got Phillips. They've just brought in Kovacic. It's not a, a, a signing that they need to make. And so they're not going to go out of their way to pay over market value for him. Now, that begs the question, well, why are they getting involved in the first place if they know we're going to go up to 100 million? Well, it's probably to make sure that we do go up to 100 million. Now that they've come in with a bid, that drives us up. And ultimately, we were their closest competition last season. If you can do something in the transfer market that costs your rivals an extra 10 million or whatever, they, of course, it's beneficial. So I do think that's the reason that they've done this, more than the fact that they actually want and think they can get him. Maybe that's me being hopeful. You know, maybe that's me kind of you know, trying to avoid thinking about going bold if this doesn't happen. But it's just the way I feel. So hopefully I'm right. We shall see. Um, 
Ethan Wanari. Uh, this is coming from Simon Collins, who's very good around this sort of the 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 in and in and ins and outs of the club. Uh, Chelsea and Man City are fighting to sign Arsenal youngster Ethan Wanari. Arsenal have until Friday. Uh, when the schoolboy registration runs out to agree a scholarship terms uh, with Nwaneri, but they face competition from Chelsea and City, the two clubs renowned as the highest payers when it comes to academy players. And City have literally just signed a 16-year-old today. Um, they do spend a lot of money on those academy players. Arsenal are understood to have made an attractive offer to Nwaneri, uh, who can sign pro terms when he turns 17, with academy manager... manager per, uh, Academy manager Per Mertesacker, manager, manager Mikel Arteta, and sporting director Edu involved in the talks. They will be due compensation after a tribunal hearing um, if the player leaves and should receive a higher amount for him because he's played for the first team. So basically, when you lose an academy player, you go to a tribunal, you get compensation from the club that he goes to. Uh, we paid compensation for Ruel Walters, for example. And that compensation... Basically, the further they've got in the academy, the more compensation you get. So because he played for the first team way back against Brentford, remember last season, um, we would get more money for him, which is obviously beneficial if he does leave. I think leaving would be a terrible decision for him. Just look at Amari Hutchinson. Um, I, I think he should stay. I think he'd get the best opportunities if he did stay. But look, it's up to him. I think he's got bad voices in his ear, bad people around him that just want quick money. But it is what it is. The good thing is we have tied down Miles Lewis Skelly, who for me, when I've seen them both play on the same pitch, Miles Lewis Skelly actually looks better. So that's very good news. Um, just a, a bit of an extra thing from John Cross in the mirror. Arteta wants to transform his midfield this summer with Rice and Havertz at the heart of his plans to try and build on their progress last season. That hard sell is the reason Havertz and Rice have wanted to come, because Arteta is a good salesman who's able to convince the players that they can chase down City in the long run. Gunners boss Arteta views, Arte uh, views Havertz as being able to fill the number eight role. And this was something I said on Twitter, and a lot of people, especially Chelsea fans, mocked me for saying that Havertz could play as the eight. But according to John Cross, Arteta sees him as being able to play the eight as well. Um, and I don't know if you saw last night, the first pictures, leaked pictures of Kai Havertz in an Arsenal shirt. He was looking very happy about it, like a man that has just escaped a toxic relationship. And to be fair, he has escaped a toxic relationship, a soulless club. And uh, I think he knows that, you know, I think Arsenal fans will give him a lot of backing. I think a lot of Arsenal fans will be desperate for, you know, even if he starts a little bit badly, we won't want Chelsea fans to know that we think he started a bit badly. So I think he'll get a lot of support. Uh, the only other update that's not really an update is Yuri and Timber. Sky Sports reporting that we're in advanced talks with Yuri and Timber. Look, I think it's fairly plain sailing. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it. I don't believe in jinxes, but um, I think it's fairly plain sailing. Plain sailing with Yuri and Timber. I think we're going to get that done uh, sooner rather than later, which is of course a fantastic signing. Uh, and that's pretty much it for today. So if you've enjoyed the video, like I said, please do subscribe. Have a fantastic evening. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully with an Arsenal bid to talk about. Uh, and other than that, cheers.